It has recently come to my attention that this sweet shiny set of netherite trims we made for ourselves last week might only be sweet and shiny for a very strange and unexpected reason. This is my like full it. set. I like the shirt too, but it reminds what? me of somebody. This is my full set. The shirt reminds me of somebody that I, I, can't, I can't unsee. What? Oh LED no, Baker. I can't believe you've done this to me. It looks like Winnie the Pooh to it's, me. It's even I, got his ears. No! Yeah! Impulse! Oh. How that, could that you? That was not on. It's Winnie the freaking Pooh. No, that was Jem. I was, um, I was thinking somebody else, but I, somebody now else. I see it. Now I see Jim, it. Jem, what have you done? The ears are like slightly moving every time you... Yeah, the ears oh are God. moving. No! Oh no, I see it! What have you Red done, Jim? a new shirt. It's okay. Pooh, there's nothing wrong with Pooh Bear. <laughs> Nothing wrong with I mean, Pooh Bear is pretty cool, actually. I mean, he just eats honey. Like, the, he literally just eats honey. Yeah. yeah? And says, oh, oh bother. He says, oh, oh bother. bother. Where's Tango? Tango did a great Winnie the Pooh impression when he got hit in the throat with a hockey puck. <laughs> Tango's not on. He got off. <laughs> Poor Tango. To be fair to you, you don't look like a taxi anymore. No, but, but I have Winnie the Pooh on my chest. <laughs> <laughs> Which I didn't notice until Jim t pointed it out. So thanks, Jim. Can you get red pants? Is it possible for you to get red, like mostly red pants? I don't want red Dad. pants. I'm not Winnie the Pooh. Put on red pants, Ren. I just want to see it. You can take them off straight away, but I need to see it, Ren. How dare you? Fine, I'll put on the stinking red pants. Oh my god, it's so cool! Oh, <laughs> Okay, you can take them off now. Unless you like them, that is. What is Winnie the Pooh's catchphrase? What does he always say? Oh, bother. Oh, bother. <laughs> oh, bother. <laughs> I, I can't believe you've done this to me. Oh, bother indeed, my fellow GigaCorp employees. What are people going to say in the cafeteria when I walk in with this outfit? Although, I gotta say, the red pants does make this kind of smack. <laughs> it is Winnie the Pooh's face. But if you look closely, it kind of looks like a cyborg version of Winnie the Pooh, right? Kind of like he's got one long LED strip for an eye and metallic teeth. He's kind of got a look on his face that he eats nuts and bolts for lunch, you know? Okay, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. I've got Winnie the Pooh on my chest, but it's Metal Pooh. He loves really loud metal music and eats nuts and bolts for lunch. Yes. Oh well, happy Monday I guess everybody, let's make an episode. Hello everyone and welcome back to another very metal episode of Hermitcraft Season 10. Although it's just this bit that's going to be metal guys, don't worry. I, I couldn't find a way to edit Pooh Bear's metal music with my usual introduction music so we're stuck with a very strange and very scary kind of intro. But fear not, dear viewers, we shall return to regular broadcasting immediately. And uh, welcome back to Colony HC-10. Here we are, on top of this redstone monstrosity that I was supposed to make last week but got distracted by trims. So this episode is dedicated to this. It is supposed to be an auto smelting machine. Uh, well, at the moment, it is just a bunch of pretty janky redstone. However, I'm very excited about it, guys. This weekend, I spent a couple hours on a GigaNet terminal inside of the hangar bay, looking through some old, dusty GigaCorp schematics. And man, did I stumble across something pretty darn sweet. Take a look at this. It is the GigaCorp heat station, otherwise known as the Hyper-Efficient Alloy Therminator Station. This bad boy is a cornerstone of the GigaCorp industrial complex and is a specialized forging facility capable of melting down even the toughest netherite alloys with ease and unmatched speed. The huge amounts of energy needed for hypersmelting in this thing is generated using Dr. Reinstein PhD's patented Sulfonic Fusion Catalyst System that fuels an array of 32 hyper-efficient carbon combustors. And don't forget, you can order your very own heat station direct from GigaCorp, although delivery times may vary, terms and conditions do apply, etc, etc. I think probably the best way for me to show you this 
is to head over to Creative for a couple of minutes and to show you how the design works over there. And uh, well, then we're going to make this thing because I am tired, very tired of smelting stuff in this extremely janky array of furnaces. No more, friends. We're upgrading auto smelting today. Uh, well, this week, because it's going to take a few days, but that's what's happening and it's going to be sweet. Okay, so here's the final redstone build for our heat station auto smelter. And essentially it's a pretty simple system. We've got two inputs at the very bottom floor, one for items in the blue that we want to smelt and one for fuel in the orange to actually uh, fuel the furnaces that are gonna do the smelting. Both the items to be smelted and the fuel are transported up to the very top of the system where they are then loaded into a couple of hopper minecart loading systems. This loading bay is set up to collect the items that need to be smelted and this hopper minecart will load 32 furnaces with items to be smelted. And I've set up the timing of the system so that the furnaces will always be smelting even if the hopper minecart go has gone back into its loading bay to collect some more items to smelt. On this side we've got a much simpler loader that will fill up a hopper minecart with fuel. It doesn't need to be timed as the furnaces are usually quite full of fuel anyway. And well below we have one final hopper minecart running underneath the furnaces which is then delivering the items that are smelting into these array of droppers. And this is where the magic of this system really begins. The auto smelting, all of this stuff is pretty bog standard in uh, auto smelting Minecraft machines, but this machine's a bit different. I wanted this to be a visual experience as an auto smelter. I didn't want the items to just disappear somewhere and then be smelted and end up in a chest for you to collect. No, no, no. I wanted to see the whole thing happening. I wanted to experience the smeltage for myself and that's what this chamber is all about. This is the cooling chamber, right? After being hyperthermated, there needs to be a cooling down of the items. So um, yes, they land in this water, which cools them down to handling temperature so that we can collect them. That's the law and I'm sticking to it. Here's how it works. Let's go through a run through. We're gonna chuck in the stuff we wanna smelt in the blue tube and it very visually goes up and gets delivered into the system, which is awesome. And the coal of course goes into the orange tube and the system will now start to get up and running. That hopper minecart is about to get loaded up with a fresh batch of quartz and will now be delivered to the furnace array. Here it comes, all the furnaces are firing up, babies. Very nice. And well, this uh, fuel hopper minecart should come and collect a bunch of fuel. Yes, indeed, it is going to be filling up those furnaces while the whole thing is smelting. And as you can see, uh, the furnaces will keep on burning as long as items are being delivered into them. In fact, more items are being delivered into the furnaces than the hopper minecart can actually bring, which means that your batch of goods will always be cooked, uh, however many you add into the system. But ready, here is where the magic begins, here in the Therminator chamber, I suppose. And uh, we can see the items that have been smelted above landing in the cooling down area and being delivered into this final bit of the machine with the the therminator uh, chamber or something uh, but yes we can see the items that we've smelted raining down through the whole system and i just really love how interactive this whole thing turned out to be it may not be the most efficient auto smelter ever made in minecraft but it's definitely one of the coolest that i've ever made for myself and one that i love a lot it's got a very industrial feel to it it's very gigacorpy uh, although at the moment it looks kind of ugly and we need to make it look a lot better, which is why we got that awesome blueprint. And we're going to make this thing look amazing over at Colony HC-10. But for now, that's the redstone. Hope you guys like it. The Gigacorp heat station is cooking with gas, I gotta say. Happy Wednesday, everybody. It's a couple of days after the previous recording, and here we are back at Colony HC-10 with a very cute-looking little surprise for us over at the hangar bay. That's a puppers. That's not my puppers either. Uh-huh. Their shenanigans be afoot, I believe. Anyway, I'm on the server bright and early this morning, guys, because pretty good news, I believe the Hermacraft server is going to be updated to 1.21 today. The reason I wasn't recording yesterday is because Azuma was working really, really hard on the back end trying to figure out how to get our update to 1.21 working and it looks like we might be very close to that happening. So I've logged on nice and early this morning to get some work done before all of that work begins. Big shout out to Azuma by the way, he spends so many hours 
in the uh, the back rooms of Hermacraft, keeping this server up and running. You guys never see it. Everything is perfect always in the Hermacraft world, and that is because of the incredible work by the Mr. Azuma and his, his awesome team that keeps this whole infrastructure in the real world up and running for all of the rest of us, including us hermits and you fine viewers. However, before Azuma logs on and tells me to log off because it is time to update, <laughs> Let's go see what this is all about. Oh, it's got a little thing and stuff. It's talking. Timmy fell down the well. Is this some sort of a clue for something? Oh, it's so adorable. Look at it. The fresh animations make the little puppy dogs look so great. And it looks, it's an untamed dog. Somebody has given me a doggo. Oh, that is, that is quite exceptionally cute and awesome. And looking at this, I have a suspicion of who this might be from. One hermit in particular comes to mind. Uh-huh. Interesting indeed. I mean, look, I don't wanna I don't wanna make it too obvious, but you know, I'd I'd say the clue the clues are there. Oh, it's too early in the morning for all of these feels, everybody. <laughs> the doggo just grew up before our very eyes. They grow up so fast. But seriously, a massive thank you to whomever gave this to me. Cough cough, it was probably false. Uh this really made my day. He is absolutely adorable. And you know what? I'm gonna leave it up to you guys watching to come up with the name. We need a Gigacorp inspired space lore name for the puppers. Let me know in the comments next episode we give him a name. Look at him. Oh, he's ready to pounce. He's ready to play. <sighs> I am officially melted. Right, back on track for today's episode, guys. Let's continue working on our auto smelter. And goal for today is to get the redstone completed and the whole thing up and running. Of course, as this is an auto smelter, we are going to need two main things. One is things to smelt, which we've got, quartz and whatnot. But number two, we need things to smelt those things with, i.e. fuel. And so we're making a return back to the land of the buttered. The 60,000 plus buttons we placed at the beginning of the season. Do you guys remember this? Feels like it was a lifetime ago, but here we are back at our Wither Skeleton Farm, which is still cooking like crazy, considering we're the only hermit on today. The spawn rates are through the stinking roof. Look at this. Insane. I do come here every now and then to do a little bit more harvesting because, of course, we need to keep our beacon supply up in the shop. Speaking of which, let me collect some of these skulls. Uh, but more importantly, I would like this stuff here. The coal that we get from the Wither Skeletons. Let's take as much of this as possible. You know what? We take some bones with us too. We might as well do some restocking while we're here. And that should probably be more than enough coal to get the heat station up and running for this week. So, uh, yeah. Fueled and ready to go. Now, all we got to do is a little bit of building this morning. Nice. Happy Thursday, everybody! It's another new morning IRL. On the server with Doc and Joel, with a couple of bits of good news. Number one, the redstone for the heat station is now installed and ready for testing. Number two, the server's been updated to 1.21. Excellent, excellent news. Okay, that lightning was extremely close to us, was it not? Did that actually strike the base somewhere? Oh my goodness. Yeah, weather anomaly detected in Colony HC-10. That might be one of the very few times I've ever seen it rain around here. Maybe the new patch has brought us some weird weather, it seems. But yes, yes indeed, 121 is here. I haven't really put that much thought yet into what 121 will bring for our own custom biome here in Season 10, but I'm thinking Armadillos. That's the first thing that came to mind, right? A local animal type that lives in these custom biomes. Perhaps they are a rodent alien creature of some kind that stow away in JMEs, and that's why they start to uh, populate Gigacorp colonies as they get more established. Something like that. I don't know. We'll work something out over the next couple of days. First and foremost, though, we're stuck on this project from the previous patch. It's the heat station. Dudes, I'm very excited today because we get to test this thing out for the first time in vanilla. You know, it's easy to make these kind of things in creative, but when it actually comes to testing the thing in vanilla and making sure you haven't messed up any of the uh, the redstone bits, it's a whole different story. 
Uh, good news is, I've been collecting some resources on stream over the last couple of days, and that's because on the weekend I casually added a new granite depot for us over in our little corner of the shopping district, and that's because last episode we got the granite permit from Pearl. As I've already made one of these depots, it didn't take me very long to throw one up, but we still need to stock the thing with granite. And a couple of days ago, we went and mined a bunch of granite together on live stream so that we can stock our new granite depot, but we'll get that done a little bit later in the episode. And one of the good things about yoinking all of that granite is that we got a ton of stuff to smelt in our new auto smelter, which is great. We also got a bunch of coal, of course, from the Wither Skeleton Farm earlier in the week, which is great. And that means we get to fire this bad boy up for the first time ever. Now, as this is the first time we are putting this redstone to the test, I want to do it nice and slowly. We'll start with a single stack of coal into the fueling system. And first thing to check is whether or not we are going to fuel all of our furnaces correctly. We should see some coal ending up in the furnaces already. And there goes the hopper with the minecart to collect a little bit of coal from here and then go back to fill all the furnaces and then return to get a little bit more coal. So. That's good, that system is working. Let's put a little bit more fuel into the coal system, the uh, hyper-efficient combustor units, or whatever they're gonna be called. And next up is to start filling the system with a bit of uh, raw copper. So I reckon let's just throw three stacks into this. And now we need to make sure that our item delivery pipe is working for the items. The coal is represented by the orange and the items is represented by the blue. And it looks like here comes the copper into the hopper with the minecart over here. I think I see the problem here. This activator rail needs to be activated firstly to get the whole system up and running. So I think what we're going to need to do is preload these hoppers with some copper and then we'll push the hopper with the minecart through the system. Now we turn the thing on when the activator rail turns on. Okay, so that was just my fault for putting the hopper with the minecart in this position without allowing it to reset the system. But here we go, we're off and things look like they cook in. A couple of furnaces are not fueled up, which is interesting. Okay, that was just me being bad at redstone. I was locking these two hoppers with these levers down here, which are enabling the powered rails for this system. So that's good. Now we just got to get this hopper minecart rolling again. All right, just chucked a whole bunch of more raw copper into the system. And yes, indeed, the Terminator chamber is raining, my friends. It is working. Let's just get up here with the Gigabug and make sure that everything is functioning. Yep, here comes all the copper that's being smelted, spat into the cooling facility. And this is where we collect it down here in these chests. And I don't know about you guys, but it looks like everything is functioning. Are all the furnaces up and running? Let's just do a double check. Yep, all the furnaces on this side are cooking. All the furnaces on this side are cooking. Yes, I think the redstone is installed and working as intended. I mean, I only made like three mistakes in the redstone. So, you know, that's a pretty good start to the day, I would say. A whole week, a new doggo pet, and a massive Minecraft update later. Here we are with a completed project in Colony HC-10. The heat station is finished. And I gotta say, one of my favorite buildings so far in our little colony over here in season 10. I just love how it turned out. It almost looks a little bit like a robot, right? Like there's an eye and there's some hair and whatnot. But the structure is finished. It is currently 100% functioning, billowing those gases into the atmosphere. Unfortunately, we got to crack some eggs to make some omelets here in the Gigacorp Loraverse. But yes, the thing is definitely the most industrial build that we've made so far. And I really love it. It's basically taken our base to another level of self-sufficiency. This auto smelter is going to save me so much time. I need to make a bunch of smelted quartz and a bunch of smelted sandstone for our uh, block pallet. 
and this is just going to help so much. Also, this helps with getting a hold of a bunch of this stuff, the copper bits that we need a ton of also. And well, we're going to put this thing to the test now. I'm hoping all the redstone is working. Everything should be functioning. We got about two and a smidge shulker boxes worth of copper to cook over here. And we're just going to run through the whole process. This is a manual input system because, you know, it's a little bit outdated. It's, you know, a design from the 1970s. Gigacorp is a little bit a little bit behind when it comes to industrialization. Listen, the Gigaverse is a huge place, okay? It requires a lot of logistics to get stuff across this giant expanse of Minecraft worlds. And, you know, because of that, the whole system is a little bit behind, huh? for a decade or two behind, but it's fine. Gigacorp is doing what it can to catch up. Also, you know, it's got bigger fish to fry than updating its furnace systems. Uh, but yes. Anyway, there we go. That's a whole bunch of fuel and copper added into uh, the heat station. We should start hearing clicking and stuff. Here we go. It's kicking in. It's rain and copper ingots, which is most excellent. And th that seemed to be a very small amount of copper ingots raining down. Let's just make sure that everything is working here. Let's do some uh, maintenance work using the Gigabug. That was one or two spats forth. <laughs> That was definitely not looking good. Are the furnaces working? The furnaces aren't working, maybe because there is something in the system that shouldn't be in the system. Wait, did I did I do this wrong or did, did somebody break my smelter? Ah yes, there might be some teething issues to deal with here, guys. It, it looks like the system kind of gets backed up a little bit at the loading section. Uh, the hopper minecart needs to be double loaded to collect enough copper to fill up all of the furnaces at the same time. And for some reason, some weird shenanigans and whatnot are happening over here. Not entirely sure what's going on now. The whole thing is locked for some reason. Uh, but there we go. That that should get everything up and running now. I Okay, I'm going to have to look into that. That's not working as intended, which is unfortunate. However... <laughs> Why does redstone have to be so hard? It's just supposed to work, but I don't know, something's broken over there. I need to go sort that out. But yes, now things are up and running. Every single furnace should be smelting on both sides of the array. Let's have a quick look. Yes, every single furnace is smelting. And if we go into the cooling chamber, we should see a rain of copper ingots flowing into the Therminator chamber, the uh, cooling system thing. And uh, that is the auto smelter. Functioning at approximately 32 furnaces per minute, whatever that results in mathematics-wise. The fuel has been inserted correctly, the smeltables have been inserted correctly, and we are doth thus smelting. <laughs> oh my goodness, what a week it has been. Guys, I hope you have enjoyed this episode. I hope you love the build. I think it's really cool. It's obviously got some redstone teething issues that I need to figure out, but... Now we've got pretty much everything that we need here in the Colony HC-10. We've got storage, we've got smeltage, we've got experience, we've got food, and all we need to do now is build some, uh, build the mega node, right? To connect up to the GigaNet, because that's our primary directive out here, uh, according to the lore. So, yeah, uh, I guess we should be getting to that. Anyway, uh, lots of editing to do. Thank you for watching, friends, and we'll smell you all in the next episode.